If you've ever been in the backcountry with your dog or overlanding with your dog, then one of the things that you know is that your pet, just like a human being, can get hurt when they are a long way from medical care. If this has ever happened to you, it can be a real wake-up moment about just how unprepared we can be to care for our pets when we're on remote backcountry roads. How do we get our dog to the medical care that it needs when it has a snake bite, a foot pad injury, a fracture, a sprain, an insect bite, heat exhaustion, dehydration, ticks, or some other injury or ailment, and it needs help right away. We can't cover everything in this video, but we do cover a lot of the essential items that we take with us on every trip. There's other safety items for Sydney that we weren't able to cover in this video, but let us know what you take for your dog. If we're missing something important, there's always more room for Sydney's gear. This is Sydney. She's our adventure dog. She goes on our trips. Before you take your dog into the woods, you really should consider some safety gear that you may need if things go wrong. This is the emergency pack for our dog that we take into the field. This is the non-emergent pack that we take into the field. Now, I realize this is a lot of gear, but I think there's some things that you'll be interested in taking. So we'll go through first the emergency pack. Uh, I'll show you how it's organized. First compartment is quick access and I have things that I need right away. So I'm gonna have a tarp to put down just to have a clean area to put the animal on. Sorry, Sydney, I called you an animal. To put Sydney on. I have sterile surgical gloves that I'm gonna act, that I'm gonna put on right away. And I also have, these are just extra large puppy pads. They're absorbent, so any animal fluids or also uh, debridement fluids that I'm gonna show you in a minute that are gonna get onto this pad will be absorbed by these pads. These are, as I said, quick access. I go to that first and I have them immediately. The next compartment are the emergency items that I'm gonna need and they're organized by what I'm gonna to go to first. So let's say we have, for example, a laceration on Sydney's leg. First issue to consider is, do you need to see the wound? So one of the things you might wanna consider is a pair of clippers. You can get, obviously, the clipper in different sizes. The surgical grade size to get down to skin is 0.25 millimeters. That'll get down right to the skin so you can get a Band-Aid on it. This is not quite that. It's 0.4 millimeters, but it suffices for my, for my needs. You can see what the wound is. So that's that. Next, for cleaning out the wound debridement, this is just a pure saline solution, just saline water. You might want to clean out the wound so you know what you're dealing with. I always have a pair of sterile surgical scalpels. If it's a bad wound, part of the debridement might be removing a chunky piece of tissue. So that's so a, good, that's idea a good, good idea to have, to have, some, have some surgical scalpels always. Sur Moving on from there, prepping the wound. You don't want to put any kind of hydrogen peroxide or alcohol-based antibiotic on the wound. The best thing you can use is a good old iodine pad. I've got several of these in here, and while you're cleaning the wound, you may go through four, five of these to prep the wound, and that may be all you need to do. Uh, I do have other antibiotics in here of a variety of different kinds that you can put on the wound, but it just depends on the type of wound. We'll get to those in a minute. After prepping the wound with iodine, next thing you want is a non-adherent pad. I have two different sizes here. You don't want one that's too big, so you want a pair of medical scissors cut to size, and then put that directly on the wound. Next step here depends on whether or not you're gonna do what they call stirrups. If you're gonna put stirrups on this, band, on this dressing, you're gonna use some surgical tape. Some people use surgical tape and also um, just some common tongue depressors to hold them in place. But the technique of stirrups is used to keep the dressing from like sliding off the leg. I'm not gonna get into how that's done today, but I've got the materials to do it. But first step is to get this non-adherent pad on, and then you're gonna, you're gonna wrap that with some padding. You can use cat padding, or right here what I have is just some good old fashioned cast padding, right? The most important thing with this kind of stuff is do not 
put it on too tight. Compression is going to be your worst enemy. You want to put it on loosely. And you're going to do like 50% fold over. So it'll go, you know, from here. And then you're going to cover 50% and wrap, wrap, wrap. After you have the padding on, your next step is going to go to gauze. And it's going to be self-adherent gauze. At this point, you're starting to build structure into your dressing. So this would be self-adherent gauze. Again, not too tight. And you're always going to leave at least the, the, the two middle toes of your dog's uh, foot exposed so you can check for warmness and make sure there isn't any inf inflammation. If you see that, the dressing is too tight and you're going to need to change it. After that, your next step will be your vet wrap. And this does not go directly to the skin and there's different different types of this. Some is the no choose type, some is just ordinary type. I have a variety of types. This is where people get messed up because it, it, it's hard coming off the roll and that means that it, tight, it tends to get on too tight. So what you want to do is pull it out and then loosely rewrap it. And then once you've done that, you can now start wrapping it loosely around your, your dog's leg. And that'll be on a normal just laceration, that'll be your final step. If you have a broken leg and you're gonna do a splint, you wanna put the splint on right after your first round of gauze. There's a variety of different types of splints. You can just use tongue depressors as well. You'd put then a second wrapping of gauze on it before you go to your vet wrap. So one thing with these dressings is you do not want to have a lot of moisture underneath them. If you've wrapped a wet leg, you need to change it regularly. You can get uh, dermatitis and skin infection if there's a lot of moisture under there, so check it regularly. And obviously the idea here is you're going to the veterinary hospital or to the vet as soon as possible. I have a couple other things of, in here that are of interest. One is an eye wash. Your eye wash is important to have. One is just a saline solution eye wash. This other is an antimicrobial eye wash. I also have a liquid bandage and another style of uh, antibiotic that you can put on a wound. The other thing that I like to have are a variety of tick removal tools uh, and a pair of tweezers. That's the emergency kit. So the, the, the whole idea behind this is treating a laceration, a bleeding wound. Now, I also have, you're wondering this I know, and I also have a special first aid kit for my brother Steve. It's right here. This is it in its entirety. If anything happens to Steve that can't be solved with this, we just walk away. Walk away. There's one exception to that rule. Whoops. He knows I'll never need first aid. There is one exception to that rule. If anything's wrong with Steve's heart, we do apply this. We feel like there's lots of things wrong with his heart. So we do this a lot. We, he's having his coffee. Oh, he doesn't drink coffee. He's having a soda. He's taking a nap. He's laughing. Whatever he's doing. So we make sure he's heart healthy. It's a defibrillator. Yeah. All right, let me pack this up and then I'll show you the non-emergent kit. All right, for the non-emergent pack, first and foremost, this should be a must have for everybody. This is the harness that you see in the thumbnail and in some of the footage in the video where you can carry the dog out if your dog's injured. We've actually had a situation where we had a dog almost an eight hour hike out on heinous, uh, rugged country. Uh, and we had a makeshift harness that we had to make uh, to carry the dog. So this weighs nothing. It should be in every backcountry person's vehicle or backpack. Um, a must have. So other things that I have in here, you know, the brush. I always have a high visibility vest for my dog. I might be out and it's a hunting season somewhere. I want to be able to put this on her. I might be doing uh, a recovery and it's a busy road. I want this on her. There may be some other reason, busy campground. I just want this on if, he's, if vehicles are moving. It's just a safety item. I always carry uh, a kit that's just a scissor kit, you know, a grooming kit for a dog. These are a must have. <laughs> Pet wipes, if you don't have them, just to clean your dog before you, you uh, have her get in, 
into your tent or into any sleeping bags if she sleeps in sleeping bags. So I know your dog has flea and tick uh, medication that it takes, but you can also get flea and tick wipes that you can wipe their hide with. Having something like this is a must have. Um, this is just synthetic powder because I also have uh, toenail clippers, which I always take. So you'd want to have this with that. Musher's uh, secret is great in case the paws are just dry, or if you're in a, if you're out snow camping or something like that, you this is just a miracle thing to have. Ear wipes. If you get anything in your dog's ears, you want ear wipes. Uh, in addition, flea and tick spray, which would go hand in hand with the flea and tick wipe. And I mentioned this already, but this is an antimicrobial eye, eye rinse. So it's just a backup. And this one is mosquito repellent that is made with all natural stuff that you can spray on your dog's fur. And then I just, I also throw into this one just backups or extras of stuff that I might have. Like these are butterfly band-aids or I might have extra gauze or anything else that I might want. So. I haven't covered food, water, uh, dog sleeping bags, sleeping pads. I have all that stuff, but that'd be a topic for another video. There's a lot of stuff here, as we said at the beginning. Let me know if you think we've missed anything. I hope there's some stuff here that you might think is good and uh, maybe select for you to take in the future. And most importantly, all of this is just about keeping your pet safe and making sure you can get that pet to a vet or a veterinary hospital as fast as possible. It's all good fun, guys. Thanks for watching.